Welcome to St. John's United Church of Christ, Orangeburg, Pennsylvania. My name is Larry Kelly, and I serve as a member of our consistory. I'd like to welcome everyone, no matter who you are, we're in life's journey, you're welcome here. We request that all guests sign the guest book in the North Fix and complete the pew pattern. I have some announcements from consistory concerning uh, the spike in the coronavirus. Uh, one of these are first off notice is that the pews are marked with tape so that we're alternating every other row and keeping social distancing. The consistory of St. John's takes very seriously our responsibility to care for the congregation. We are aware that there is a surge in serious COVID cases at present. As it is in, as it, as in the Advent season, we will have larger attendance than usual. We have decided to continue to strongly request that those who attend services in person wear a mask to protect those who, of us who are especially vulnerable to the virus. We're not requiring masks, but ask we to prayfully consider wearing one for the sake of others. Masks are available at the church entrances if you need one. I also mentioned that we, we won't have any you know, singing, as uh, we have the choir because of the of the Pope. Um, I'd like to announce our special offering uh, this month is for the School Hill uh, Association Disaster Relief. Uh, the contributions will stay basically in the stay in School Hill County for special response like a, a flooding. Uh, your offering can be left uh, at the entrances in the offering plates. We also have a cookbook available for $10. The profits will benefit the Orangeburg Food Pantry. And you can see Kay Jones, um, or else I don't know who else might be handling the sale today. Our annual meeting, annual meeting will be held next Sunday. We need one more member to join Consistory. Is there any volunteers out there? Well, if you uh, would like to be interested in it and want to find more information, you can see uh, Susan McFarney, Tom Kramer, or me. Um, the annual meeting will be next Sunday, and we hope that everyone will attend so that if you have any questions about the annual report, that you'll be there to uh, ask those questions of consistory. Are there any other announcements anybody would like to make this morning? Steve. Good morning, all. We're grateful to be back here again after a month or so hiatus. We did not have COVID. We did not have COVID, but we had that bronchial thing that was going around for all the old food. So we got blessed. Anyway, for the cookbook, uh, I mentioned it briefly. Um, if you purchase one, it goes to help support the food pantry. It's a long effort of all the people who contributed recipes for it. In the back of the book, you'll find blank pages. If you come across a recipe that you would like to put in for next year's book, please write it in the back of the book and then turn it back in and we'll give it back in. But we'll put that new recipe in for the following year. So in that way, we'll begin to build a nice large recipe book. Second thing I'd like to say, and it's rather disappointing, COVID has struck our engineering club. The competition that was supposed to take place this Saturday was canceled, unfortunately. Uh, we got a week's notice. So what they're going to do in lieu of that is they're going to send us the gaming elements for the competition. And they're going to invite us, if consistory is willing, and the church is willing, to put in a summer scrimmage so that people can come to the church, Polish or Paul, and actually compete, so our kids will have a chance to compete. Uh, they did get officially uh, recognized for this year's competition, so those that have applied for scholarships, they're still good. And I have one student who is actually getting one for the Cleveland Institute for Engineering, so I'm very pleased to announce that, um, and thank you for your time. I just want to say, again, New Year's resolution was to do something new. Well, hand bells was the perfect opportunity. So we practice at 6 o'clock on a Thursday, and we have lots of fun, and you don't have to read music, I promise. I will make it easy for you. Okay? 
I just wanted to thank everyone that uh, during my recent illness sent cards and prayers and called them home. Um, I'm certainly doing a lot better now than I was uh, several weeks ago. And uh, I just appreciate uh, everyone's uh, interest. And also I'm very grateful to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for blessing me during this time.
And during the time of Nehemiah was the, the head honcho, the, the priest Ezra found a copy of God's Word. And so they gathered all the people together and he started reading it. And you know what? what well, how did they react? They started crying. Why would they cry? Well, they realized that they hadn't been doing what the Bible told them to do. They weren't living the way that God wanted them to live. And Nehemiah, who was the head honcho at the time, said, don't cry, don't worry. This is a time to celebrate, not a time to cry, not a time to be sad. Celebrate. Go, go have a big dinner. Have a, have pig roast. Well, something like that, anyway. And share some of, I have to think about that theologically correct or not. Anyway, share some of what you have with others so that they can celebrate too. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Oh, there's a song about that. We'll, we'll sing it one of these days. Okay. Well, it made me think of the word joy. I'm getting there. I'm getting to the point. Joy. Joy is spelled J-O-Y. And a, a, a lady I knew many years ago died, went to heaven, and, and I had told her, this, this plaque was really neat, and so her family gave it to me. Okay, and it says, in case you can't read it, you can see it on the screen, J-O-Y. You see the J-O-Y? Right here, from top to bottom, J-O-Y. And each letter means something. Okay? Uh, so how do you find joy, folks? J, at the top. Jesus first. Jesus first. Learn, learn to live the way that Jesus wants you to live. That's number one. Number two is O, others. Others next. Love all people. See the best in everybody. And finally, why? Yourself last. Oh, that sounds sad. That doesn't mean you don't love yourself, but, but you want to do things for others first. Serve others ahead of yourself. J-O-Y. Jesus first, others next, yourself last. Now there's something that's easy to memorize. Maybe I'll ask you next week if you remember it. That is, if I remember it. Let's be joyful, everybody. And now, for those going to Sunday school, you may be on your way. And we'll see you in a little bit. And he sat down close to the front and 
It was almost time for the service to start, and he, he decided he tapped the man in front of him on the shoulder and, and said, My name is John Jewell, and I'm preaching this morning. <laughs> the man said, Nice to meet you, Mr. Jewell, but I'm the pastor here. I thought I was preaching. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But quickly they discovered he was supposed to be preaching at another church that had the same name. There was a few miles down the same road. How confusing. So Pastor Jewel raced out, got his car, and drove as fast as he could over to this other good home church. But when he got there, the people were walking out the doors. Apparently they had had enough of waiting. When the pastor didn't show up, they, they left. What a greeting that was for Pastor Jewel. I don't know what he did, but he'd say, please go back in so I can preach. <sighs> you think Jesus ever showed up late to the synagogue <laughs> on the Sabbath? I don't. I'll bet none of us have thought about that. I don't think he would have anyway. But our passage from the Gospel of Luke this morning is about the Sabbath that Jesus was asked to preach Yes, believe it or not, that's in the Bible, in Luke. And unlike every other preacher on earth, I believe that he wasn't nervous. I just can't see it. I know he was human. He had a human side to it, but I just can't see it. He was so much on mission and so focused. Jesus, at 
identified with those people. It's no accident that his first bed was a manger feeding trough for animals. That he spent his adult life without, without having a home of his own, without any possession beyond whatever it was that he carried as he traveled from town to town. God cares about the poor. Oh yeah, it, it's, it's a major deal. Jesus loved so much that he chose to walk in their shoes. And he calls his followers to do the same. And so Jesus' first sermon began with the words, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He took Isaiah's message and made it his own. Another thing we learned is that God's love covers everyone. Everyone who is hurting. A very station in life. His next words in this passage are this. He has proclaimed, sent me to proclaim, freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind. To set the oppressed free. Free. Proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus meant these words. Literally. In his life on earth. He did all that. He set people free. Healed them. He stood up for those who weren't being treated fairly. He welcomed the rejects and looked out for the forgotten. And he never wavered in his mission, never, to bring hope and healing and freedom to those who were most in need, including those who may have been rich in things, but poor in spirit. No matter how good our lives may look on the outside, how many of us suffer from a poverty of spirit, Many of us are, are, are imprisoned, imprisoned by shame, anger, envy, fear, guilt, sorrow. No matter, no, no amount of money will take care of those things. But Jesus can bring healing. Jesus can bring healing to your life. And finally, we learn this, that God brings us hope to break free from the things that keep us in bondage. Because this passage shows us that we have a God who loves us and cares about our pain, our problems, <clears throat> enough to enough to endure those pains and problems himself. <laughs> we understand that, that kind of love. We can live more joyfully and freely because we know a God who loves us that much <coughs> who will comfort and strengthen and provide for us in all circumstances and that all will be well.
After church, the Ogan family discussed how they could give sacrificially for the, this special collection for this needy family. And here's what they decided to do. They decided to buy a large bag of potatoes and live off that for one whole month. That would allow them to save up to $20. This was quite a few years ago, folks. <laughs> they also decided to use as little electricity that month as possible so they could get their bill down and save some more money. The children volunteered to get yard work and babysitting jobs to raise money. Yeah, they really did. They, they even bought yarn to wheat pot holders to sell to the neighbors. Edie said that this month before Easter was, was one of the most joyful her family had ever experienced. They were so excited, so excited to see their offering money grow a little bit more each day. They couldn't wait for Easter to come when they could put the money into the offering plate. The idea that, that they could help someone in need, they could pass along some of the blessings that God had given them. It came so much joy that, that these extra sacrifices that they were going through this month turned out to be fun. They loved it. Well, Easter came. And it was raining and it really poured. Edie and her siblings had to put cardboard in their shoes to cover the holes and the worn places. They all walked to church. They had raised $70 for that special offering. And they couldn't contain their smiles when they placed those bills in the offering plate. After church, they were singing all the way home. And they celebrated with an Easter lunch of boiled eggs and potatoes. To their surprise, the pastor knocked on their door that afternoon. He spoke briefly with Edie's mother, and then he left. Well, Mrs. Ogan came back to the kitchen after that, and all the joy had been drained from her face. In her hand, she held an envelope containing the morning special offering for a needy family. That envelope, by the way, had $87 in it, 70 of which had come from them. They were in shock. Honestly, they were shocked. <laughs> They suddenly understood that they were the poor family in the church. <laughs> they never thought of themselves that way. Never thought they were poor. In fact, they felt sorry for families that didn't have what they had. What did they have? Of course, they had love. They had faith. And they had good friends. Nice neighborhood and a safe home. Well, that kind of put the damper on things for a while. Sadness settled over the house that week. No one touched the special offering money. It just sat on the table. Children even protested when their mother woke them up for church the next Sunday. They didn't want to go, which was really unusual for them. But she insisted. That morning there was a missionary visiting the church who spoke of his work in Africa and the needs of the churches there. And he asked the congregation to contribute, contribute to putting a, a, a new roof on one of these churches. And all it would cost was $100. Well, Mrs. Ogan looked at her children when he said that, and they looked back at her, and the whole family began to smile. Without saying a word, she pulled the envelope with the sacrificial offering out of her purse. And when she dropped that in the offering plate, the joy returned to the Hogan family. And imagine the missionary's joy when he thanked the church for raising enough money to buy a new roof for a church in Africa. 
He said to the pastor, you must have some rich people in this church. And he wrote this, suddenly he struck us. We were the rich family in the church. <laughs> and the missionary said so. From that day on, she said, I've never been poor. Never felt poor. Always remember how rich I am because I have Jesus in my heart. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me and proclaimed good news to the poor. One of the deepest questions that people ponder is, is there a God? And if so, what is God like? In Jesus' first sermon, he answered those questions. Both of them. God is right here with you and me. He's come to bring good news. And he cares about those who are hurting and those that are in need. What more do you need to know? Is that a God you can trust with your life? I should say so. And I hope and pray that this morning we will do this as well. We will do it again. We will do it in you. Trust our lives to the God who has come to bring us good news. Amen. Now I'll ask you to please stand if you're able together to read this morning the UCC Statement of Faith. We believe in God, the eternal Spirit, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our Father, and to his need to be testified.
want to add a few uh, new names here to this and uh, an update. Uh, Mike Nye has requested that we offer prayers for the family and friends of Jeffrey Post, who died on January 15th. Family and friends of Jeffrey Post. Also, prayers requested for the family and friends of Emma Yuri, who died January 16th. Family and friends of Emma Yuri. Also, a new prayer request uh, prayers for Christine Moore, who is recovering from knee replacement surgery on was on the 12th of January, requested by husband David. And uh, Fred Bender, who views our services from Florida, uh, we uh, have his name on our prayer request, our prayer list, as he receives treatments for uh, prostate cancer. But uh, just wanted to share an update that he sent my way this week that that uh, he received a very good report from his doctor that, uh, that uh, things have really cleared up very nicely for him. And so we will uh, say thank you, God, and continue our prayers and prayers for the many as well. Before I offer prayer this morning, is there anyone else who might have uh, an additional prayer need this morning? Yes. Uh, if we can pray for the friends and family of Dean Boyer, who passed away. Friends and family of Dean Boyer. Dean? Dean? Dean. Of Dean Boyer, who died recently. Family and friends of Dean Boyer. Let's go to God in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your love and presence our lives. There's one reason that we come here to this place to worship you on this Sunday. Thank you for your place in our lives. Please guide our steps. We pray for ourselves that we would be we remain faithful to you in every way. Pray often to think of you during the ups and downs, the joys and the troubles that we deal with every day. We pray for those who are challenged by health issues, so many different things, little things and big things, things that worry us, things that threaten our life and well-being. We pray for those on our prayer list this morning, certainly for families who have lost loved ones recently in particular. Pain of grief, pain of loss is not something that is dealt with quickly. But may they, and may us all, may we all know that you are very close to us. That your spirit is upon us. For that we give thanks as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> and so I'll ask you to please stand for the final blessing. And I hope this service has been meaningful this morning. Uh, and if you have made a new or renewed commitment to follow Christ, or have interest in joining this wonderful congregation, or would like to talk, or would like to pray together, please let me know, let us know. Our worship is ending, but our service, of course, is just beginning.
And as we leave this place today, we are called to share God's love.